and welcome to Hatta Gastro. In today's video, we'll be speaking about a very interesting topic and one that is especially important for all the women out there, and that is toxic shock syndrome. So let's get started. So what is toxic shock syndrome? Toxic shock syndrome, which is also commonly known as TSS, is a rare and potentially life-threatening illness that is caused by an infection with certain types of bacteria, including Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes. These bacteria release toxins into the bloodstream, which then spreads the toxins to the body organs. This in turn causes severe damage and illness to these various organs. Toxic shock syndrome can affect anyone, including men, children, and postmenopausal women. And risk factors for toxic shock syndrome include skin wounds, surgery, and the use of tampons and other devices such as menstrual cups, contraceptive sponges, or diaphragms. So from this definition of toxic shock syndrome, we get that it's actually a rare but can be a life-threatening illness that is usually caused by two main species of bacteria, and that is Staphylococcus aureus, which is seen here, and they are gram-positive cocci, which means round-shaped bacteria, and they are found in clusters or have a grape-like design when we see them. And the other one is Streptococcus pyogenes, and this is also a gram-positive cocci, which means they are round-shaped bacteria, but these are found in chains. And these two bacteria are very important because they actually release specific toxins into the bloodstream of humans, which can actually be very poisonous and may lead to the onset of life-threatening illnesses. So toxic shock syndrome is actually very common in women aged between the ages of 13 and 45 because it's usually found in females who have regular periods. But as it says in this definition, it can affect anyone, including men, children, and even postmenopausal women. So what actually happens in toxic shock syndrome is we either have a skin wound, and this can be seen in men or women. We can either have a recent surgery, and this can be in men or women. And the use of tampons and other devices to control menstruation, such as menstrual cups, contraceptive sponges or diaphragms, and this is all found in females only, can actually bring about the cause of this disease. So therefore, as we can see, the majority of cases will be found in females because from all these risk factors, the majority of them affect females only. So what actually happens in toxic shock syndrome is that we actually have a colonization of these various areas, either the skin wound or the recent surgery wound, or the area in which the tampon is inserted, or the menstrual cup is inserted, or the contraceptive sponge or the diaphragm, we have this extreme colonization with these two types of bacteria. So it can either be a Staphylococcus aureus or a Streptococcus pyogenes. And once either of these bacteria actually begin to invade these different areas, they actually release a large amount of toxins into the bloodstream. And what actually happens here is that these toxins are actually carried to various parts of the body because they infiltrate the bloodstream and then they are carried to all the different organ systems in the body. So this is actually how one suffers from shock. We have these toxins entering all the different organ systems and causing havoc within them, causing multiple organ failure. And this is why the disease, although rare, is potentially life-threatening and is actually quite a medical emergency. So now that we know what the basics of toxic shock syndrome is, let's take a closer look at those risk factors in a little more detail. So as we mentioned in the slide before, toxic shock syndrome is typically caused by a bacteria of the Streptococcus pyogenes or Staphylococcus aureus type. The underlying mechanism involves the production of superantigens during an invasive streptococcal infection or a localized staphylococcal infection. So risk factors for toxic shock syndrome include a history of using super absorbent tampons, a recent surgical wound, a local infection in the skin or deep tissue with either one of these bacteria, either strep pyogenes or staph aureus, a history of using the diaphragm or a contraceptive sponge, and a history of a recent childbirth, miscarriage or abortion. So what actually happens is when we have these foreign devices or foreign instruments which are inserted into specifically the vaginal canal, the vagina actually becomes colonized by this overgrowth of either these two types of bacteria. 
And once this happens, we have the severe amount of toxins which are also being released by these bacteria, which are now actually released into the bloodstream and can travel throughout the body. So these are actually the three conditions which are required for the development of toxic shock syndrome. So number one, we have the bacterial colonization in this area. Number two, we have the exotoxin production. And then number three, we have the entry portal for the toxin, which means the actual toxin leaving the initial site of infection and now being released to other parts of the body. And as we can see here, it says the early phase presents with flu-like symptoms in these patients, which include a fever, a rash, and hypertension. So moving on, let's explore these specific signs and symptoms in a bit more detail. So the onset of symptoms is usually sudden in this disease and symptoms of toxic shock syndrome may vary depending on the type of bacteria that are producing toxins. So it's either a staphylococcal infection or a streptococcal infection. But the signs and symptoms may include nausea or vomiting, a sudden high fever and chills, a watery diarrhea, a rash resembling a bad sunburn or red dots on the skin, dizziness, lightheadedness or fainting, a low blood pressure which is called hypotension, redness in the eyes which is called conjunctivitis, and peeling off the skin on the soles of the feet or the palms of the hands. And this is actually called epidermal sloughing. So as we can see here, this is what the typical aspect of these patients look like. They will have a headache, a fever, they will have confusion, they might have a sore throat, a profuse and watery diarrhea, and as we said, it's associated with women who menstruate and excessive tampon use. They will have a non-purulent conjunctivitis, meaning no pus or discharge from the eye, but just the redness of the eye. They will be lethargic, they might have vomiting, and they will have a sunburn-like rash, which is like red dots on the skin. And in a very short span of time, we will have very rapid progression from hypertension into syncope, which is loss of consciousness and shock. So this is actually a medical emergency to treat these patients as fast as we can. The diagnosis of toxic shock syndrome. So the diagnosis is based upon the Center for Disease Control criteria and is as follows. So we need to have a body temperature above 38.9 degrees Celsius which is around 102.02 degrees Fahrenheit, a systolic blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters mercury, which is a hypotensive state, the presence of the diffuse macular erythroderma, which is that red rash or sunburn-like rash that we spoke about, a desquamation, especially of the palms and the soles, and this usually occurs one to two weeks after the onset. So as we mentioned, that epidermal sloughing of the skin, they must also have the involvement of three or more organ systems because as we said, once that toxin is released into the bloodstream, it's able to travel to the various organ systems and may actually cause failure of the various organ systems. So now we're going to have signs or symptoms that are actually related to the failure or the involvement of these various organ systems. So the involvement of the gastrointestinal system is obvious through vomiting or diarrhea. The involvement of the muscular system is apparent if there's severe myalgia or creatinine phosphokinase levels, which are at least twice the upper limit of normal for the laboratory. The involvement of the mucous membranes are obvious when we have hyperemia, which is redness of the vaginal, oral and conjunctival cavities. The involvement of the kidney system is obvious by kidney failure. And this is when we can see the serum creatinine, which is greater than two times the normal limit. The involvement of the hepatic system can be obvious when we have liver inflammation, which means the bilirubin levels, the AST and the ALT will be greater than two times the The involvement of the coagulation systems will be apparent if we have a low platelet count. So if the platelet count is below 100,000 per millimeter cubed, then this can be a sign of the disease. And finally, the involvement of the central nervous system, which is apparent by the confusion without any focal neurological findings in these patients. So this is actually based on the criteria from the Centers for Disease Control and the patients should also have negative results of blood, throat and cerebrospinal fluid cultures for other bacteria. So bacteria that do not include Streptococcus pyogenes or Staphylococcus aureus. 
They should also have a negative serology for rickettsia infection, leptospirosis, and measles. And cases are actually classified as confirmed or probable as follows. So it's confirmed if all six of the above criteria are met unless the patient dies before desquamation can occur. And it's probable if five out of the six criteria above are met. And finally, let's talk about the treatment for toxic shock syndrome. So the severity of this disease frequently warrants hospitalization. Admission to the intensive care unit is often necessary for supportive care. The treatment usually entails giving intravenous, which means through a vein antibiotics, giving intravenous fluid to treat the shock and to prevent any further organ damage, giving the patient heart medications in patients who present with a very low blood pressure. Dialysis may be required in patients who develop kidney failure. We can also give blood products in patients who have extremely low blood platelets, for example, and supplemental oxygen or mechanical ventilation to assist with their breathing if patients are finding difficulty in breathing. And deep surgical cleaning of an infected wound may be required. So if these patients do not come in due to the use of tampons, but they came in due to a burn or a scar or a recent surgery that has actually become infected, they will require a deep surgical clean of this infected wound and may even need a debridement of the tissue so that the infection is completely removed. And that brings us to the end of this video on toxic shock syndrome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.